What's up everybody? It's the Common Sense Investor coming at you with another video. In this video, I want to talk about suicide a minute. Alright, I don't know what is going on. But I got an email from somebody. And they were telling me about something to do with Lou talking about suicide and somebody sent him a suicide letter and that another YouTube channel addressed the situation and it was really low class both of them so they wanted me to address it and I didn't even know what was going on because I've seen I seen the headlines of some of Lou's shit, but I don't watch Lou no more. In fact, I'm fixing to go unsubscribe from him because you're not going to same reason I unsubscribe from John Wick Sniper. You're not going to sit there and call your followers, which is me, stupid, retarded, motherfuckers, and all kind of other names. You drag people down with that shit. And I unsubscribe from John Wick Sniper because of it. And I'm, I'm unsubscribing from Lou because of it. Because that brings people's spirits down. And it causes this kind of environment where people become confused. And they don't know what to do. And they don't know who to turn to. So, I'm going to address the issue of suicide. Because I was asked to in this email. And I was asked to do it with class. And I don't know how to do it with any more class than to share with y'all that I'm a victim of suicide. That my younger brother took his life while I was in jail. And I remember I was in jail with one younger brother. And my other brother was out here. And I called home one day. And my dad said, here, your brother's here. So I said, okay. So I'm talking on the phone with him. And he was crying. And I said, what's up, bro? And he said, man, you just don't know how hard it is out here. And I said, yeah, I feel you. And he said, no. He said, I'm all by myself. And I felt so bad. And I said, bro, if you could just hold on, I ain't got much more to go. And I was walking down the walk at Angola and I seen the inmate ministers coming towards me and I was one of them so I mean it wasn't nothing unusual that they approached me and they said have you heard and I said heard what and they said your little brother died and since I had a little brother in prison with me and that was kind of like a normal thing you know, that you didn't know if you was going to live or die. <laughs> and so I said, what happened? And they told me he hung himself. And I said, oh, man. And they said, you need to call home. They're making arrangements for James. And I said, James, that was my other younger brother, the one that wasn't in jail with me. And... When I realized they were talking about him, I blacked out, and I went to one knee, and I remembered what he said, how hard it was, and then he was all by himself. So yeah, I'm familiar with suicide. I'm also familiar with the fact that there was a time, once I get to me, He's jumping up on me and wants to love on me. <laughs> and I remember there was a time when I was in Angola and I was in the dungeon. And I was in the dungeon for 18 months. And I gave up and I said, Lord, this is it. I said, when the man brings the mail, I said, this is it. That'll be the last time they pass for 12 hours. And it was my plan to go ahead and just hang myself and end it. I couldn't take it no more. And the man brought the mail. And as he got down to tear and he stood in front of my cell, I'm waiting on him to move on. He called my name and I said, what? He said, you got mail. I got up to get my mail. And I never get mail from nobody. Ain't nobody 
writes me. Well, I got up and I got the letter. And it was from the preacher that raised me in the Lord. And I opened the letter and it was pictures of him and his family. And he said, man, we've been looking for you everywhere. Because I left the church one night in the middle of the night. I gave up on God and I just left. And he wrote me a letter and he said, we've been looking for you everywhere. And he said, we was going through the internet and we found uh, a list of all the people with my last name. And they started with A and they worked their way through. And they found me, long story short. And I was like, oh my God. I was going to take my life within the next 45 minutes. As soon as the guard had left, that was the plan. And I got a letter from the preacher from 10 years prior that they had been looking for me and that God loved me and everything. And I thought to myself, wow. Now you stop to think and you think, the Lord reached out to me and had them send me that letter and stop me from killing myself. But then if you think a little deeper, that letter had to take time to get there. So it was known what I was going to do before I was going to do it. And things were set in motion to stop me from doing it. And my life was saved. My brother's wasn't. So, when I talk about suicide, yeah, I'm familiar with it. And I know this, that when it comes to suicide, the reason for suicide is you feel like there's no hope. You've given up on hope. And I know for a fact that a lot of people a lot of people. We talk about 4 million to 6 million people involved in AMC and up to 10 million people involved in AMC, but we stop, don't stop to think about how many of that number is underwater and under stress. And we make our videos and a lot of YouTubers don't take that into consideration. That we just throw out a video Credit Susie going bankrupt. But I wonder sometimes when I watch these videos, do the YouTubers stop to think about the mentality of the people that watch our videos? Because I do. I try to. I try to remember that. And that's why I try to bring encouragement all the time. <laughs> and when I start feeling discouraged, I try to stay away from the fucking computer because I don't want to bring anybody down with me at that time why because I understand how volatile this play is and how important it is to so many people I'm one of them this play is important to me just like it is to you but I do know this and let me tell y'all something else I was talking to one YouTuber and he kept referencing the Lord and I said, you know, it's always been on my heart to, to make a video and said, you know, we've tried every other tactic. Why don't we try a live stream where we pray <laughs> as a unit and ask the Lord to intervene and help us in this fight? He thought it was a wonderful idea. But I do know, all I know is this, people. Yes, I realize every time I hit that record button, there's somebody on the other end of that video that needs it for encouragement. And that's why I try to do what I do. So, if you're considering suicide, then here's the only advice I can give you. Do you remember when we had to run up and how exciting that felt. All right. And 
when you looked at your account on your phone and it was at the number it was at, do you remember how fucking stoked you were? Okay. Now you look at it and it depresses you. It depresses you to the point of suicide. But what you got to understand is your emotion is tied to you concerning yourself with what that price is. You were excited because it was running up. You get depressed when it's running down. You got to disconnect. My life became so much easier. I fuck, you think I didn't think about, man, I ought to just kill myself for getting in this fucking mess we're in. It's crossed my mind, not, not in a serious sit down and think about it with a pistol in my hand kind of suicide, but I thought about what the fuck have I got myself into. So, that's enough, I guess. You have to take your focus off. It's, it's so much easier, people. It'll be so much easier if you realize we're not in control here. That there's no such thing as buying pressure or selling pressure. These were myths. Or they're not really myths. They're facts of the stock market when the stock market is running efficiently, but it's not anymore. So, the normal principles of the stock market, <laughs> these motherfuckers driving me crazy. <laughs> hey! You know? <sighs> and I'll leave you with this. You hear us make videos and we tell people, you know, if you sell now, you're going to regret it for the rest of your life. I'll say it this way. If you think taking your life is the right answer, that's just like selling out early. And you don't want to be a sellout early. You don't want to be a paper hand bitch. <laughs> well, don't be a paper hand bitch in life. Get the fuck up. Check out what the stock's at. Keep up with it. If it helps to get in another play, because it does help to have another stock to look at, then do it. Fuck what these people say. It it helps. It, 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 it's helped me to have Mullen and GTI because that gives me another chart to look at besides fucking AMC. Till all this shit's worked out. So, that's the advice I got for y'all. Just realize that how you're feeling is tied to your connection to the price of this stock. And quit worrying about it. It's going to be okay. It's inevitable. Love y'all. Be blessed. See you in the next video. Feel the blood creeping up from the heathens Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason If they wanna go eat, then you know I'm gon' feed them If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon I got eyes in the back of my head, I'm seeing tape